Jodway, and I'm a pediatric nurse practitioner and an assistant professor of nursing at Bethel College. And today we're going to be doing a head-to-toe assessment on a hospitalized infant. Our objectives for today are going to be the learner will demonstrate a physical assessment on a hospitalized infant. Second, the learner will utilize critical thinking skills when decision making regarding case studies related to an assessment of a hospitalized infant. Prior to seeing the patient, what you want to do is get a health history or an end of shift report. What that would include would be the patient's name, their age, and their diagnosis, any type of equipment that they might have in the room like a cardiac apnea monitor, an IV pump, or chest tubes, or any type of equipment that you would need to know about. Um, the other thing that you would want to know is about how did the patient do over the last 24 hours um, and that. So as we proceed to the patient's room, we're going to knock on the door and then we're going to come in the room, we're going to wash our hands and we're going to introduce ourselves to the patient and the patient's parent. Um, so my name is Teresa Jodway and I'm going to be doing a head-to-toe assessment on your child. I'm going to be listening to their heart and their lungs and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. So I'm going to go ahead and I notice that the baby is awake, but what I want to do when I walk in the room is I want to look to see is the baby sleeping or is the baby awake? Because if the baby is sleeping, I may want to do my assessment in a different, in a different pattern. So I see the baby, Hal, is awake and I'm checking out his ID band. So this is Hal and it has his birth date and his ID number here. And so I'm going to start with his head. And what I want to do is I want to feel his anterior font now and I'm just feeling is it soft? Is it flat? Is it bulging or is it sunken? Then I'm going to proceed to listen to his heart. And with, with the heart, what I'm going to do is I want to listen underneath his gown. So I'm going to take apart this. And if you remember on a child or on an infant, what you want to do is you want to listen at the point of maximal impulse, which is your at your apex, which is the fourth intercostal space left midclavicular line. So it's right below the nipple. So I'm gonna go ahead and do his apical heart rate, which we wanna um, listen to it for 60 seconds. And what I wanna to listen to is I wanna to listen to make sure I hear S1 and S2. And make, do I hear any abnormal heart sounds like S3 or S4 or any heart murmurs at all. Then the next thing I wanna do is I wanna to listen to his lungs. But before I listen, what I wanna do is I wanna count his respiratory rate. So while I'm looking at, as I'm looking at his abdomen while he's breathing, but I'm also looking at his nose, because if you remember, infants under four months of age are nose breathers, and so we wanna make sure that his nose is not obstructed at all. We see he's got a nasal cannula in, so we wanna make sure it's not obstructed. If it's obstructed at all, we can always get our lovely bulb syringe and suction out his nose before we go ahead and listen to him. So I'm gonna go ahead and count his respiratory rate. And I like to listen while I count his respiratory rate. So we're gonna do that for 60 seconds. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is listen to his lung sounds. And I'm gonna listen from side to side. And I wanna make sure that I listen in all five lobes, anteriorly. And what I'm listening for, I'm listening for clear breath sounds, and I'm listening um, for if I hear any wheezes, any coarseness, or any crackles at all. I'm also looking to see if I see any retractions, which that just means if I notice any muscles in between his ribs that are moving up and down, or if he's using any accessory muscles below his rib cage, or supraclavicular, any of his neck muscles, or using his nose at all, um, like nasal flaring to breathe. So I wanna to listen to the rest, to posterior, his posterior lung sounds. So I, you can either roll him over or sit him up. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit him up. And so we're gonna sit up and I'm gonna hold him here. And I'm gonna listen posteriorly the same way I listen anteriorly. I'm gonna go from side to side. And I wanna make sure that I'm listening in all the lobes. But I also want to make sure that I'm listening for the full inspiration and expiration as I'm listening to him. And his lungs sound, sound clear, so I'm going to go ahead and lay him back down. And then next I'm going to go to his abdomen. And what I want to do first is I want to just inspect his abdomen. And I'm just looking to see is it round, is it flat, or is it protuberant. Then the next thing I'm going to do is you want to remember to auscultate next. So I'm going to listen to his bowel sounds. And remember, you wanna listen in all four quadrants, and you wanna listen for either normal bowel sounds, hyperactive bowel sounds, or hypo bowel sounds. 
or you may have absent vowel sounds. If you don't hear any vowel sounds, you want to listen for at least five minutes before calling them absent. And if they are absent, then you want to notify the physician. Then the next thing after auscultation is I would like to palpate his abdomen. And I'm going to do deep palpation. And I'm just going to put my hand across his abdomen and feel for any masses or look for any scars or feel for any tenderness at all. Um, if he cries in that particular area, that may mean he's in pain. Or if he draws his knees up to his chest, that could mean that he's in pain also. So after the abdomen is done, then I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to re-put his shirt back on, and I'm going to re I'm going to assess his peripheral pulses. So I'm going to check his right radial pulse, and then you also want to remember to check his left radial pulse, and you want to remember to check them both to see if they are strong or weak or bounding, and if they feel, um, if you feel any irregularities at all. With infants under a year of age, you also want to make sure you feel their brachial pulse. So I'm going to feel his brachial. And they feel nice and strong. And then you also want to check the capillary refill of both hands. And that's just checking to see if the nail beds are pink or if they're cyanotic um, or any clubbing of the fingernails at all. And hopefully the capillary refill is less than three seconds. And you want to check that on both hands. And those look good. Then I want to proceed down to his feet. But as I'm going down, I also want to make sure that as I'm checking each of the systems and each of the body parts, that I'm checking the skin color, the skin temperature, and the skin texture at all. So his legs feel warm. I'm going to come down. I'm going to feel his pedal pulses. And I'm going to feel them on both feet. If I can't feel his pedal pulses, then I'm going to go ahead and check the post tibial pulses. And then I'm also going to check his tail, toenails as well for capillary refill. Okay, then um, the other thing I would like to do um, before I go ahead and end my assessment is I want to see is there any other skin breakdown. So as I'm looking at and we've checked a lot of the arms and the legs and the abdomen, but we want to look at his face. Where the nasal cannula is, is there any skin breakdown where that's being held at all? If there is, then we want to make sure that we cover that or protect that. Same with the biopsy on his foot. We want to make sure that we move that every couple hours to make sure that that's not doing anything to the foot at all. Then we want to check the IV. His IV is in his right hand, and we want to make sure that we check it for whether it's soft or hard, whether he cries when we touch it or not, whether it's red or you see any red streaks, or if you see any fluid leaking out of it. As well as checking the IV site, you want to make sure that you're checking your IV fluids, make sure that they're the correct fluid, and that you're checking the correct rate on your IV pump to make sure that's correct. Um, going back to the skin then, I want to make sure that I check his diaper area because babies that wear diapers can have diaper rashes. So before I check the diaper area, I'm going to go ahead and put on my gloves and check his diaper area. I can also check for urinary output while I'm down here, also for his stools, and we can also get him cleaned up as well for his diaper. So we're going to check his diaper and look for any rashes. And I don't see any rashes at all, so that's good. If we did see any rashes, then we'd want to make sure that we let the doctor know so that way they can get him some ointments and we can do some um, protective care with his, so he doesn't have any more skin breakdown in his diaper area. Um, as we're concluding our head to toe assessment, what we want to do also is we want to make sure that we always include the parent or the caregiver involved in the assessment or in the care. If they don't want to hold the patient while we're doing our assessment, then that's okay to let them um, put the patient into bed and then let the parent go ahead and just sit and watch. They can use the restroom or shower or whatever they want to do while you're doing um, your assessment. The other thing that we want to do too is we want to make sure that we check on our developmental milestones for, for our children. Um, Hal is nine days old, so what we'd want to do is we want to check does he have the reflexes that a baby should have. Um, can he hold his head up? As he starts to get a little older, can he sit up? Can he roll over? So we want to make sure that we're checking our developmental milestones. And the third thing that we want to do is as the child gets older, we want to make ourselves what we call user-friendly, making sure that they are not afraid of any of the equipment. So it's okay to let them touch the stethoscope or let them touch the blood pressure cuff or let them touch different things um, that, that's not going to harm us so that we're not afraid of that. Um, and I think that this concludes our head-to-toe assessment of a hospitalized infant. I want to thank you for your time and your patience, and have a great day. Thanks.